Hi, and welcome to another episode of Fitness and Friends. I am your humble host, Dr. Bob Ruano. Before we get into today's guest, uh, I want to lay uh, a little groundwork on the subject we'll be discussing here today, and that is goal setting. Um, man, uh, through many years of trial and error, dozens of books and probably hundreds of podcasts on the subject, I think I finally have a, a, a handle on it. And um, I'm going to share it with you. Now, I love analogies, so I'm going to lay one on you here. Let's go back. Let's look at the, uh, the NASA space program in the 60s. They had one big audacious goal, and that was to get to the moon and get to the moon first. Um, so they had their goal, but now they needed the vehicle to get there. So their goal was the moon. Let's say your goal might be losing 10 pounds. It might be getting a promotion at work, or maybe it's improving your relationship with your spouse or significant other. Those are great goals. They need a vehicle. Well, NASA, they built the rocket. For us, maybe we need to follow a particular dieting program or an exercise template uh, or get additional certifications for that job promotion or maybe write a love note to our, our, our loved one. Uh, the third element to that formula is execution. So for execution, for our goals, that would be okay. Uh, on a daily basis, this is what I'm going to be. This is going to be my menu. Uh, this is going to be my workout template. Uh, this is what I'm, I'm going to send these, these love notes or texts to my, to my spouse. Um, for NASA, it was to light the rocket. Uh, astronaut Alan Shepard famously says, as he was sitting in the capsule prior to takeoff, he said, Houston, light the candle. I love that. Light the candle. So... Having said all that, today's guest is Cody Clayson. Cody, I believe, has this, uh, this, this process uh, and goal setting thing uh, in, in his DNA because from a very early age, uh, he has walked a walk with this. So uh, without further ado, Cody. Yeah, thanks. What's up, my friend? Welcome to the Innovative Back Solution Studios. Yeah, thanks. I love it. <laughs> Happy to be here. It's pretty cool. Headphones and all. Yeah. So speaking of NASA. So um, let's start. Um, Let's talk in just a little bit of background. Let's give everyone a little background on you, where you've come from. I know you're a, a local yeah. guy, a Buholtz grad. Yeah, I've lived in Gainesville my whole life. Went to Buholtz, Santa Fe, kind of moved up through the normal route there. Yeah. Um, worked at Gainesville and Fitness. I've, you know, so I've been around Gainesville my whole life. I love it. Uh, now, so going back to Buholtz, because this is something that came out uh, in our conversation in preparation for the show, you are a pretty good student. Yeah. So tell me a little bit, uh, grades, what, what did you finish up with? Yeah, uh, we graduated senior year with a 4.5. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> that, that's, that's crazy to me because, uh, well, you know, I was in high school, uh, I was a get by student. Yeah. I was a C student at best. So to hear a 4.5, I'm like, what are you taking classes on the outside? Uh, yeah. no, I mean. <laughs> advanced I, classes. Yeah, I think it really had to do with the friends you were around, the people around. It's like, you know, those are the classes they were taking and I wanted to be with friends, so. Yeah. Kind of naturally, I would take those classes, and I'm glad I did well. But yeah, for sure. So. And so uh, after high school, now you played lacrosse too. Yes, that's I uh, love the great sport, yes. and that's really uh, it's really grown around here too. So when you definitely. were playing, it was probably pretty early on. Yeah, it was definitely early on. Definitely didn't get the recognition it gets yeah. now. Sadly, yeah. my last two years, it started to mm -hmm. we started to have you know some better players, some better coaches. Yeah, it's definitely build the sport, but. My first two years, it was just kind of you know something to do. Well, you, you could consider yourself the OG of the Buholtz lacrosse program. How about oh, yeah. that? Yep, I was Go definitely in there. Uh, so, uh, you, exceptional student. Uh, so there must have been some sort of work ethic there that, uh, like you said, besides just being around friends. I wanted to be around friends too, but I guess uh, I hung out with maybe a little lower class yeah. friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, playing lacrosse, when did you get into training? Yeah, so... Played the cross for years. Our last two years, we had a new coach came from New York, and he was also one of the strength coaches with UF, and he kind of started team workouts in a way. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that's what he did as he was training, or as he was playing the cross too. Uh, and that's probably when I started like having an interest in it. Mm -hmm. You know, even though we'd get up at five in the morning some days and go work out before class, but. Uh, that's probably when it started, um, and I definitely saw myself want to keep doing that even after school. So yeah. I had a bench set, wow. barbell, all that in my bedroom, you play some games, yep. log off, go work out. That's crazy. Back, we, so. we, I, I've got a bunch of teenage and pre-teenage boys, and yeah. uh, if I were to fire out them the idea of, hey, let's get up at 5 o'clock and go work out. Yeah. Mm. Mm. 
tough crowd that would yeah. be. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, you had it in you. So, uh, with that, I guess that was you went on to college, and uh, yeah. what did you decide to study there? Yeah, so went to Santa Fe first mm-hmm. and started to study exercise science. It makes sense. Um, it was just fun. Like, yeah, you know, school's not always that fun, but when right. you're studying something you enjoy, you enjoy then yeah. it makes it a little more bearable. But um, during that, I also started, that's when I started working at Gainesville Fitness. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of learning about it during the day at school and then almost kind of applying it a little bit at night as it worked. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was just fun. Like, and I th- definitely doing those things at the same time made you feel like, you know, that's your whole world. Right. Like that is what you care about. And it just sped up you know, that interest and in, in liking it and learning okay. it. So, yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, you, and again, just from your background, just knowing you, 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 you delve into a subject and you, yeah. you delve in deep. Um, when did you discover CrossFit then? You made the, the switch over. To yeah, so I was at GHF for quite a few years, went from supervisor to trainer, and then shifted over to the CrossFit side. Mm-hmm. It was probably around 2015, 2016. Okay. Um, and I th- it was probably as soon as I saw it was competitive, you know, people were competing, even if it's just working out, but yeah. if it's competing, you know, it's definitely something I wanted to be a part of yeah. and jump into. Um, and I think that's when it kind of stuck. Yeah. That's when it started. Yeah. Uh, I had a few good mentors, uh, but things changed. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that didn't kind of sway you from it. Well, I, I mean, I can see just, uh, again, you, you've, you've got this competitive nature to you. Yeah. And, um, and a passion for fitness, it's like a, it's a great combination. Yeah. Yeah, good CrossFit is. Um, definitely. Yeah. I mean, especially now, I think you ask anybody about CrossFit, and they give you this some wild idea of, you know, throwing 400-pound logs and clean and jerking <laughs> 500 pounds and running a mile in three minutes and this. Yeah. It's getting there. It, it tends stuff, but yeah. Yeah, it's so. getting there. All right, so, um, yeah, you became a, a coach at that point, too, yeah. the CrossFit coach. Yeah, so I started coaching, um, and at, shortly after, I had a few coaches leave, mm-hmm. um, and this is probably, like, the most distinct moment I remember where, like, I'm going to get good at this. This is what I care about. This is when I want to do it, because when those coaches left, you know, a lot of the members that they had – coached yeah. left with them okay. at the time you know nobody really knew who i was what i was capable of and nobody really had yeah. a reason to trust me right but i just remember showing up every day thinking you know next time they see me that's they'll <laughs> regret it but yeah <laughs> a little so, chip or a little yeah. motivation oh, yeah. wait, 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 wait. um and that seems to be a theme with you as we as we'll yeah, find out i mean i obviously had those mentors and those coaches to learn from yeah but there's this kind of a, a benchmark you know if they were doing that well and people respected them yeah i'm gonna blow them out of the water yeah hopefully and you know, yeah you know kind of ha- have that same respect the same rapport with the same clients or coaches so. well yeah and i've i've had the uh the, the privilege of being coached by as well and you have a very um sort of methodical stoic yeah way to you yeah it's definitely not just random it's definitely not just you know beat you up yeah um you know there's certain things you want to focus on certain things that are going to give you I guess you say most bang for your buck or most sure. time spent in the gym. Um, and I think I quickly learned you don't, you can't just waste time training for four hours doing nothing. Like even if you're training for many hours, you got to have a plan. You got to know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of when and I started watching the big names, obviously, you know, the Fronings, the Frasers, the mm-hmm. Gleepers of the game. And I would just mimic them. Yeah. Like I would, you know, these are their numbers. These are the weights. These are their times. And that's what I would do. I would try and, you know, hit those numbers, hit those goals. And if I couldn't, I would quickly find a way to, yeah. you know, shore up a weakness to hit that. Right. And that's kind of every day I would show up, and that's the goal. So. Well, I'll tell you, you know, coming in, in between classes, you know, you'd be the guy over there doing uh, doing work off the blocks, yeah. which uh, if, you, if you're not into the, the, the CrossFit world or the Olympic lifting world, um, it's, uh, it's boiling down a lift into pieces, uh, which it, it takes time. Um, it yeah. takes, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, kind of, everybody wants to go in and do all the sexy stuff. Yeah. But it's it's that groundwork, that foundation that gets you to the top. Yeah. Um, but not, not a lot of us are, uh, are, are willing to put in the effort yeah. to do that. I think, 
you know, Matt Frazier said something along the lines of, like, he's not a addicted to the suffering, but he's addicted to showing up to the test and the test be easy, mm-hmm. the test not be hard. Yes. So every day throughout the process, you know, achieving whatever he needs to achieve yeah. for that test or that workout, whatever it may be, for that task. I heard a really cool uh, interview with uh, Keith, uh, uh, o- O'Keefe, the guy who owns uh, Live uh, and Loud. loud. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I guess he's close friends with Matt yeah, and has manager. been with them at all the games. And, yep. and somebody was asking me, he's like, yeah, it's, uh, what's going to be like now that Matt's not competing this <laughs> year? Uh, you know, it'll be less stressful for you. And uh, he said, no, it's probably going to be more stressful because at the games, he was so prepared, sure. he was not nervous. He, yeah. he knew that there was nothing more that he could have done. And, um, and he enjoyed that. Yeah. The, 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 that that week of the games, sure. as opposed to you know dreading it. Yeah, and uh, I was like, wow, that that makes sense. <laughs> it's just being over prepared. Yep. Yeah. So I, I like that. So you have you've obviously taken this skill set uh, of of you know developing a process that will be yeah. effective to getting you to your goal, and uh, you've carried that over into your professional life. Yeah. So c- can I t- can I tell a quick story here? Yeah. <laughs> so. Last summer, we have a mutual friend, uh, Adrian. And he came over, and we were working out in my garage. And, uh, and I had asked Adrian, I was like, oh, you know, what's Cody up to? You know, I haven't seen him in a while. And uh, Adrian uh, told me, he's like, wow, C- Cody just won uh, this award for being the, uh, the uh, he, he, what you brought in, the most new clients. Most new accounts, yeah. Most new accounts. He established most new accounts in all of, AIG. Now we're talking tens, tens thousands. of thousands sure. of representatives of AIG, and this guy brought in the most business. Yeah. Um, I was initially I was shocked. I was like, Cody has a job, <laughs> and then second, he has a college degree too. <laughs> I mean, because he's a very quiet, quiet guy. This this, this Cody, um, uh, but then immediately it hit me like, of course he's successful. I, he knows how to create a process and apply himself and. Um, and that's the difference. I think, sure. uh, you know, a lot of people, they want to, you know, say on the professional level, they want to make the money, but they want to find the shortcuts to do it. Yeah. And um, so tell me a little bit about that. How have you taken some of the, the skill sets you've developed in the, in the CrossFit the training world and yeah. applied them to your professional life? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, big one, I guess you could call it discipline or just the will to want to be the best or yeah you know, the best in the room, the best of who you're compared to, whatever it may be. Uh, off mic, you're, you're being, uh, you're being yeah. humble now, but off but mic, he said, I want to yeah. be the, the youngest. Yeah. No, I don't know you want to be the best, yeah. but I want to be the youngest at doing it. Yeah, so <laughs> just like I would look up to, you know, the Frasers, the Fronings, whatever it may be, yeah. you know, you would find who's doing it well, who's doing it the best in your field, whatever you're doing, yeah. and start to, you know, mimic them, learn their habits, learn their patterns but faster, you know, yeah. do it sooner. And I don't know, know if I mentioned, this is a, a financial advisor yep. you are. Yep. Um, so yeah, t- tell me about that that training process. Yeah, so it was pretty long. Yeah. Um, but one thing I remember the most, I think we were talking about this before, is <laughs> part of my onboarding process, obviously, you know, you would shadow and you would learn from people who were doing it. Um, so they sent me to shadow two, two guys who were doing pretty well in the company. Um, and I was there for three days and you know, we talked, we learned a lot, but after that first day, you know, I, I'm gonna smoke these guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, no doubt. So it's pretty ballsy. Yeah. And well, and, and you did. Out. Like yeah. you said, your very first year. Yeah, if I was there for, I don't know, four months, for you know, a quarter of a year, but then the full year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've seen since then because obviously that comes with you know yeah. financial gains as well. Sure. You've updated your your attire, I see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cody oh. is Cody is, is famous for the uh, sunshine cup yeah. red shirt. That is like the, the Cody the uniform. Staple, yeah. Uh, How yeah. often do you wear that shirt underneath your your shirt and tie? When you think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Superman, right? Yeah. I like most of the times I have you know I have something like this on and just throw the polo or the shirt and under over it and then leave the appointment and go straight to the gym. So. Wow. Yeah. So I and again we we were talking a little bit about this. So it seemed to me that. Um, yeah, going out and you know buying a fancy or driving a fancy car or, or the clothes, that's not your motivation. No, not necessarily, you know. And I think a lot of people want the freedom, like we talked about. Yeah. Uh, but the freedom to do what? And usually you got to have a goal, a hobby, or something you want to put that time to- time towards. Mm-hmm. 
Um, but it's not necessarily about, you know, making the most money, mm -hmm. um, but just allowing that to give you the freedom to do what you want. So yeah. not everyone can escape a, a nine to five job if they have, you know, bills to pay kids to you know take care of. But, sure. but setting yourself up early on, even if that means years of just nothing, you know, sacrificing, not going out, not doing this and that. The grind. Yep. You'll set yourself up, you know, down the road mm -hmm. for freedom that you don't even, you know, think exists this yeah. young in life so well i i know it, it like i said it took me a lot of years to figure that out yeah. you know is i i had goals in mind they really weren't my goals sure. you know i a, a house and a family and yeah. you know a uh and, and this this you know a, a professional career and, yeah. Um, and yeah it wasn't until recently that i realized gosh these are somebody else's else. goals yeah. and uh, once i scrapped that and figured out what it is i wanted I, just, I was able to create it yeah. and this whole um, you know like we were talking about in the beginning of the show this whole um, goal setting goal setting is great yeah. um, but it's developing the, yeah. uh, the, 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 the process and then yeah. executing the process and if you can enjoy if, if you can enjoy that um, you know you're more set. power to yeah. it and even if you don't enjoy it if you're um, if you have the uh, the, 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 the willpower the willpower, or the, maybe the focus of knowing what you're trying to achieve yeah yeah definitely. Yeah, so that's so. Uh, you know I um, I have talks with my kids uh, mm -hmm. about this uh, probably more often than they would like, and I'm just hoping that you know, one of these days it's going to sink in. Game. And yeah. like I said, I, when I when I heard your story, I'm like, man, you, you had it from from day one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just something I grew up with, just being competitive, mm -hmm. uh, definitely playing sports, being on a team, being competitive. Yeah, uh, I think even now as you get older, you can tell the people who who have played team organized sports and those who don't mm -hmm. you know they can take people being hard on them they can take you know criticism but they also know what it takes to win yeah and obviously that's different for everybody but uh, you can you can see those traits that you learn playing a sport that's a great life. point that's yeah. a great point the, the, um, uh, I, I've been told that I'm and uh, and I this is a compliment that I'm very coachable in other sure. words I uh, I, I appreciate mm -hmm. input, yeah. you know, whether it's in CrossFit or, yeah. um, or you know, doing this podcast. Yeah. Um, you know, I want to do a great job, and uh, Elio's helped me a lot in in the uh, in the pro in the process of of putting together a, a, a good program. Yeah, <laughs> my wife loves it when I call it a program. <laughs> I grew up in the '70s. That's what we called it. She says it's a show. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I love this. So so what's what's on your your kind of goal board now? Uh, it's slightly changed. So we were talking a little bit um, about a year and a half ago ish. I had an adductor injury, sadly, but from oh, that's right, frisbee, not even you know, <laughs> CrossFit. So that kind of delayed things. Yeah, um, but it's getting back to normal. So, and the training side of it, really, it's just recovering, which mm -hmm. is almost back to normal. Great, um, you know, strength wise, putting the time in. We'll probably get back to competing soon. Good, um, very good. But you know, professional-wise, the luckily the profession we're in rewards. You know, the more work you put in directly reflects the work or you know what you get out. Yeah. Um, as well as, it gives you the freedom to work as much as you want. But it gives you the freedom to work on those other things like training. Yeah. Um, you know, investing, real estate, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so those are kind of the goals that are coming about. Um. But as far as training goes, I think just competing again mm -hmm. um, sooner than later. Yeah. Um, well, good. It'd be great to have you back. Yeah. You've got Wadapalooza coming up here in January. Oh, yeah. The big one's coming up. So yeah. that's, that's what, you know, everyone looks for. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, when, when's Bacon? Bacon Beatdown. That's in the last, summer. Yeah, last week. So that might June. be a little early then, huh? Yeah, that one's coming up. I'll be down there. I'm not sure if we'll compete in it. Um, I lost Adrian. Mm -hmm. uh, the third teammate's going individual, but... But who, who is that? Chris. Oh, Chris. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, but I'll definitely be there. We'll yeah. see if we'll compete though. But okay. Awesome. Yeah. Now, how about on the uh, how about on the personal side? Um, <laughs> you think you can get away with uh, without yeah. me and not asking about Miss Ashley? Oh yeah. <laughs> Ashley, who's <laughs> sleeping? She worked overnight. She's a nurse. Um, I, know, I bought a house in September. Congrats, man! Yeah, I kept that kind of quiet, but 
But you keep everything quiet. Yeah. Like I said, I didn't know you had a job, and here yeah. you are, uh, Mr. AIG. Yeah, <laughs> it's better to keep it quiet. You know, if it's if it's worth noting, people will note it for you. So, so that's. Oh, that's yeah. oh yeah. Hey, let's let's quote that down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously, buying a house is a a big deal. Yeah, but there's so many people who buy a house, so it's kind of like <laughs> sweep that on the rug <laughs> onto the next kind of thing. Um, but what kind of advice would you give somebody who's maybe? Um, you know, they, 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 they have goals, but they just feel lost. Yeah. You got to step back and focus. Like, you have to know what you are trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. And, you know, along the way, things will distract you and you'll find things that interest you. And you just have to have the focus to know this is what I'm trying to achieve. This is what it takes to achieve it. Mm-hmm. And stick to that. Yeah. Um, and you'll tell right away if someone wants it bad enough or not, whether yeah. they stick to it or not. So. Right. Uh, it's that know, discipline. So if you yeah. if you if you're not in love with like getting up at five o'clock and in, in the morning and, and, and yeah. working out and, and and bettering your craft, you yeah. know in that case as a, a lacrosse player yeah. uh, and then now as a CrossFit athlete, yeah. um, if you don't fun. love that, then you do just have to have the discipline. Yeah. If you don't have either one of those, then yeah, I mean, pick another goal. You gotta want it. <laughs> you you gotta want it. So make sure you know why you're doing it. You know you're not doing it because. Someone told you to, and yeah. or, you, or you see somebody else who has it, and you know you think, yeah, that's what I want. So you definitely have to know why you want it. You have to want it. Yeah, it's all about how bad you want it. But yeah, um, no, stay it's, focused. It's, it is. It's like it's, yeah. just, it's really inspiring to me. And you know, yeah, when I had that conversation with Adrian in the garage, I was like, I got to talk to this yeah. guy. Yeah, I miss Adrian, but yeah, he's doing good things. How are they doing? Uh, oh, and where are they? I guess is I the think question. they're in Tennessee. He, sh- he sent me a picture of a truck bed turned clubhouse, like a tree house that oh, they really? slept in for a couple of days <laughs> traveling across the country. But we had we had Adrian on. He was the actually the very first guest, and he was telling us that he's getting ready to set on this adventure out to Utah. And, um, and he's another one, kind of a I don't yeah. know if you call it a, a wanderlust, but uh, he just. Just a real free spirit. Yeah, definitely. He gets it. He gets yeah. it. So that's that makes sense how you guys were, were so close. Yeah. And I mean, very confident in himself. Like he knows he'll always figure it out. Yeah. Which, you know, I I, I get that about it. you too. So like he'll bet on himself ten times out of ten, mm-hmm. no doubt. So Yeah. And you kinda gravitate to po- people like that. Yeah. The confidence, the leadership. Aspect. Yeah. So you learned a lot from him then too, because you, know, yeah. you were a young man when you guys uh yeah. became friends. Yeah. Yeah. You're still a young man. Who am I talking about? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, got a couple of questions for you here. Uh-oh. Ray, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, 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 uh, so it's a question I ask all our guests here, okay? okay. And, and that is this. Have you ever experienced a, a failure um, at some point in your life where at the time it seemed um, devastating, like you, you, you're not going to come back from this one, but yet... After some time, you realize, you know what? That was actually a blessing in disguise, and it allowed me to achieve the successes that I have today. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I've had a few. The big one that comes to mind is when I kind of initially switched into from the gym role to the professional career, the advising role. It was a lot sooner than I wanted it to. Um, You know, absolutely knew this was not the right time. Uh, I thought I was not going to be able to train as much. I was months away from starting the like the advising, um, just finishing up certifications, and you know it was kind of worrying. You know, yeah. Not sure what's going to happen. I thought you know, I'm not going to be able to train at all, and then it kind of turned around where you know excelling at uh, being an advisor just gave me more time to train mm. in a way. So yeah, um, that was something that. So that loss of a coaching job actually yeah. catapulted you yeah to, to where you are today yeah. But again, I, th- I think that just from what I know of you, you kind of thrive on adversity. Yeah. You kind of thrive on somebody and, doubting you. Yeah, and you have to. I mean, you naturally have to. It's, it's going to happen more than you think. Yeah. Um, and whether that's self-doubt, not usually, but it, when other people doubt you and it's apparent, mm-hmm. then you have to be the kind of person that's like, I'm going to show you, or like, I'm going to turn around and I'm you know, you'll regret it type thing. So. I love it. It's inspiring. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Last question. If you could pick one exercise to do for the rest of your life, and only one, yes, what would it be? Um, I think I, you could ask the people I work out with, and they'll tell you right away. It'd probably be the back squat, or any squat, but probably back squat. 
tells to carry over from that. It affects everything, doesn't everything, it? Everything, especially athleticism. I mean, uh, you'll nothing's ever easier if you're weaker. You know, no one's ever said this would be yeah harder if I was stronger. So, you know, it carries over to especially everything we do: yeah. Olympic lifts, strength, running, metcons. There you go. Movement, it's, so. it's it's as basic uh, of a functional movement as you can get. Yeah. It I is, love it. So. Thank you very much for joining us here yeah. today, my friend. This was fun. Love having you. And uh, like I said, just uh, your, your your story is inspiring for such a young guy too. Uh, I want my kids to watch this one. Yeah, yeah. I would, I'm definitely gonna sit the down. Double and watch back forty two. <laughs> double back forty two. There you go. Shout out to Griff. <laughs> so. Thanks for joining us today. If you have any questions or comments uh, of anything that we talked about, comment below and we'll certainly reply. Cody, how can someone get a hold of you? Say if they had some questions, you know, finance wise or training wise. Yeah, I mean, easiest way is social media. I mean, through Facebook, uh, Instagram. I think it's Clayton Thirty Eight. You can find me. Send me a message. That's probably the easiest way. I'll be on that all day. So that sounds good. And uh, so yeah, if you enjoyed the episode, like it share it uh subscribe on youtube yeah play to your kids and they can fall asleep at night whatever you want to do with it it's yours our gift to you <laughs> so uh i want to invite you this week if you have a goal that you've been kicking around write it down and then with that on the second sheet of paper i want you to write down some of the things that you need to do to achieve that goal okay because those those listed are going to be your vehicle and then finally execute or as Alan Shepard, famous yeah. astronaut, said, light that candle. See you next week. Nice. Sweet. <laughs>